G'day. Thanks for joining Woodworking Masterclass. My name's Steve and welcome to my workshop. What we've do, been doing this series is making a table with cabriole legs and dovetailed drawer construction and a dovetail carcass. So far we've made the top, we've learned how to join a board together and we've made the carcass. The last episode we made this carcass using dovetail joints. If you missed any episodes, go to our website woodworkingmasterclass.com. Okay, this is how we left it last week. We've got a carcass all except for these bits weren't joined in. And if you can remember, I said when you make the rails for your carcass, make five. And the reason being, the fifth one we cut up into pieces like this. And you'll notice them here. Now, on the bottom of the carcass, these are called draw runners, and that's what the draw actually runs on. And on the top, they're called kickers, which means when you pull the draw half out, it doesn't tilt and fall out. So kickers, runners, but made out of the same stock that you made the rails. Easy to fit. What you've got to do is be mindful when you screw holes, make sure that the hole is a lot bigger than the screw, so it wobbles inside. The reason for that, with natural timber, it will expand and contract with changes in humidity and weather, and even wind. So what we want to do is make sure that if this expands or shrinks, it can freely do it without being inhibited by being anchored here. So how we fit them, it's quite simple. Just get a little bit of glue, pre-drill, and you put a little bit of glue on the end Yuck, and a little bit just in there. That's all the glue you use. So there's uh, so I might, <laughs> I hope I didn't knock the mic out with that one. <laughs> my wife washes my jeans. Okay, so there's a bit of glue there and there. Then we put the screw in. The other one, but no glue on this end. It's free to move. And just make sure that it lines up nicely with the edge. There we go. And as all true craftsmen do, especially with slot head screws, you dress the screws so they're all facing the same way. Well, I think sad with Phillips head. You don't get that bit of finesse in your work anymore. Okay, so two kickers, two runners. Now we start to make the draw. As with everything I do, when I cut something, I always cut it oversized. That allows for any mistakes that I make, and I make a lot of them, but it gives me that privilege of having another shot at it without wasting the timber. So I've got an oversized draw front here, which I'll mark here. That's the straight edge, and I know that that's true and 90 degrees. I place that on the bottom, so that's marked the front and top, on the bottom rail, so it's nice and tight, and then I'll mark about, oh, a mil or half a mil above the opening. I'll do that on both sides. I mean, in a perfect world, everything would be dead square, just out of interest sake. Oh, that is square, that's okay. <laughs> But over 30 years of working with timber, things can go out of square with changes in weather easily. Now what we do is I transfer those marks over and then I join them up. If they're parallel, it's no dramas, but I'll exaggerate this. If for example, that is exaggerated, it was on a tangent, I would then line up my saw blade to the narrowest end and run a saw cut down there, which means the rest I would take off with a hand plane. So I've got one here. It's almost fitted. And I also mark on the inside a one and a two, and they correspond with the rails or the sides of the, the drawer, so I don't get confused when I'm putting dovetails together. You can get so confused if you don't keep a nice record of things. 
Okay, that's a little bit tight. I think I'll just take a fraction off with my block plane. Normally I'd use a shooting plane, but I know this is square, so I can get away with using a short sole plane. Now, just take a nice little shaving off there, and that should be a good fit now. That's exactly what we want. So we've got a nice, tight, firm fit. Now, we do the same with the sides. Again, I've marked these, one and two, to correspond with the drawer front. I cut them oversized to start with and do exactly the same as I did with that front. These I've trimmed a bit. And what I want is not a really sloppy fit, but I don't want it tight either. So it's just a question of making them, that doesn't quite fall through. So what we'll do, again, get the block plane, just take a tad off the bottom there. And we'll just try that. Okay, that's lovely. So it's a nice snug fit. It doesn't fall through, but it doesn't jam. So we have to do that to both sides. And then we've got the front. Now, in the front of a drawer, what we use is what's called half blind or half lap dovetails. And if you saw the episode last week, what we did, we did half lap dovetails on this carcass. These are them there. So they don't go all the way through, they're covered up by the sides. And that's so you don't see the end coming through the drawer front. I've already cut some here, but you'll notice something else is a bit different as well. I've got a slot. The reason I have the slot is so I can put in a drawer runner or a drawer slip, sorry. So these are cut and then at the bottom, the inside bottom of your socket, you can run a saw cut up there. Because imagine if you had your drawer sides and you took a big chunk rebate out of that, you'd have a very, very fragile drawer side, which would break. So what we do is we get material about the same thickness as the drawer side and we glue it on. And then we can take a rebate out of here and we've got a stronger drawer side. Also, we've got more area for the drawer runner to go on. Okay. So it's important when we go over to the saw that we line it up to the bottom edge of that socket. And at the same time, we run through the drawer slip. So what you'll end up with, and what I do for a little bit of aesthetics, is I put a round over on it. So you'll end up with a piece of timber like this. But interestingly enough, they all line up now. So when we actually start to put the drawer bottom in, they're gonna fit nicely without catching. Also, that's what we need when we're marking out the back part of the dovetails. Now the back part of the dovetails of the drawer is what we call through dovetails. A lot of people say half lap dovetails are harder to make. Personally, I think the through dovetails are because you can get away with a lot of um, errors with half lap dovetails, but you're totally naked with a through dovetail. So after the break, we'll come back, I'll show you how to set it up, mark it out, we'll cut one, and then we'll start making the draw. Okay, see you soon. Hi, welcome back. Just before the break, we were talking about draw slips and how they strengthen the sides of the drawers and also how it allows the draw bottom to go in uh, without binding. The other thing a draw slip is really important for is setting out the back of the drawer. Because we want to slide the drawer in from the back, the back panel of the drawer has to be a lot narrower. And the way we find that out is by marking it using the draw slips. I'll show you the difference between a half lap. This is a piece I made a fair while ago, but that's a half lap dovetail there. And if you look at the back of the drawer, there, that's what they call through dovetails. You see, you can see the end grain coming through and it also comes through at the back and it's notched in. You'll notice we don't cut the shoulders off of the dovetails. Here we've cut the shoulders off and here we leave them whole. 
And also, the back of the drawer isn't as wide. So therefore this panel can slide straight in. So how we mark out the through dovetails is by getting the drawer side. So these are half lap. That fits in there like that. This drawer slide comes in there when it's all cut to length. So now what we have to do is find out what distance we need for the draw back. That was our original material. So what we do is hold that on the bottom of the draw slide and then make a mark at the top of the rebate, which is here. So make a mark there. Then continue that mark around. I've already done that, look at that. And that then becomes our baseline. So if you can imagine, this bit of wood, for all intents and purposes, is only that wide. Because this is going to be taking that withdrawal slip. So then we we'll mark out the dovetails using that as a baseline and that as a top. We do it the same way as we mark out the half lap dovetails. But because I haven't got as much room, I'll only come in about two mil from the ends. And again, I want two dovetails. So I mark those lines across. So I find a number that I can divide by two, which is, if I turn the ruler, that'll give me 30. So half of 30 is 15. That's the centre of my piece. If you wanted three dovetails, but you know, you, you say, okay, divide that by three. So that's 10, 20, 30. That's how you can divide very easily. So that's the centre piece. Put our pencil on it, move the square up to it, mark it. And then we come in about two mil again on those lines we've just drawn. You know, a lot of people don't bother marking them out. They just do them by eye. But I think it just looks nicer if you've got a bit of symmetry with them. And I don't know, sometimes we all need a few guidelines. There we go, put the pencil there and mark it. Now mark that. That is waste, but we're not gonna cut that. But this little piece in here we are, this piece here we are, and this little piece here. Then if you're watching the episode last week, we made a dovetail jig, or if not, you can use commercially made ones. Before that, we've just got to mark out the lines. So because the side and the back are the same thickness, the marking gauge is going to be the same. So on the back, you only mark the two faces. Don't mark the top or the bottom because we're not gonna cut those off. So now, again, look at the face side. That's the inside, this is the outside. That's what people are gonna see. So I'll put a mark here, one here. And I'm just bringing those lines that I've marked around the corner. Put your line on the mark and then you draw from the gauge, gauge or gauge line up to the end of the piece. That way you don't overextend. Turn it over and do the other piece. Okay, there we've got Two dovetails marked out. That's going to be waste. And because we're not cutting the shoulders off, we have to bring these indent lines back. So that now has to be cut out. That has to be cut out. I might just extend that line a little bit further. There we go. And that's the start of our through dovetails. So pop it in the vise. Trusty Japanese saw. Whoop.
Be careful not to go through the line. And just do all the, if you're going up and down or at angle, I do them all in the one process because then I'm not changing the angle of the saw. Be very, very careful. I got an email the other day from somebody and they wanted to know what timber I'm using. I'm actually using Queensland maple, which is a beautiful furniture timber. But this table would also look nice in cedar. Cedar and I don't get on very well, so I don't use cedar now. After using it for 30 years, I get a bit of a rash with it. All right, then we get a coping saw. Just take out the waste. Be very gentle because these are very fragile little tails. Clean the waste out exactly the same way as you clean the waste out using the half lap dovetails, which I spoke about in a, another episode. Again, squirt of water down there. Whoops, a block, hold down and then chisel it out. I'll do that whilst you're having a break, and when we come back to the other side, I'll show you how to transfer it onto the back of the drawer. Okay, see you soon. Welcome back. Just before the break, or during the break, I finished cutting these through dovetail for the back of the drawer we're making for this cabriole leg side table. Now, once you've got the measurement of the through dovetails at the back, then you can saw the back of your drawer down to size. The way to do that is you actually want the top of the back of the drawer to come in just where the top of that socket would be and also at the bottom of this socket. That way that allows the drawer bottom to slide in under here and the drawer side goes all the way to the back. So it's all covered in and there's a bit of a, uh, an indentation if you like there. So I've already pre-ripped this bit down to size and as you can see, it fits in there quite nicely. Last week I was talking about this dovetail sled, which I saw on the internet. David Barden, I think his name was. Uh, if you go to woodworkingmasterclass.com, I've got a link to his set. Very easy to make, but very, very useful. A little bit different when you're making a setup for through dovetails for the back, because you haven't got a reference point on the side. So just square it up. So the surfaces are flush with each other. Then take your piece of um, timber. Whoops, I just put the wrong one in there. There you go. That's what pressure does to you people. Okay, just use the back rail. Pop it in there. Make sure it's flush with the top of the sled. And then take the through dovetail bit and align it so the bottom of that socket lines up with the bottom of the back of the drawer and the top part of the socket on the top of the uh, slide, the side, lines up with the top of the back. Then you slide it forward. And as I said, I don't like using a knife for marking, but in this particular case, I have to because a pencil won't fit in there. So very, very carefully Mark where you want your pins to go. And just make those a little bit more defined. And of course, your set out with your gauges is the same as what you used on the sides. So it's along there, along there, 
but don't bother marking the top because that's actually going to fit into the socket and that's going to fit into the socket. So then they just get cut and married the same way as a normal dovetail um, and pin setup gets put together. And you'll end up with a drawer with a lap dovetail in the front and through dovetails in the back. The other thing we have to do, because we've already pre-run the drawer slips, is check out a little bit so it'll actually fit up under the back rail, like that, if you can see that. So the top of your slip lines up with the back of the back of the drawer and have it nice and flush with the bottom of the drawer side. That done, you'll end up, oh, with a drawer that looks very similar to that. Now what we have to do is do the drawer bottom. As I said before, make a bit of space for myself, I like cutting things oversized. So if you're fortunate enough to get one piece of timber that's wide enough, terrific. If not, as in this case, this has been joined. Now it's got a nice feature on the back, so I'd have that showing in the bottom of the drawer. What I would do, and a lot of people, they would go, oh, well, that drawer's only that wide, and they'd fit it like that. You've got a join down the middle, which really I think looks a bit tacky. So for the cost of a couple of cents worth of wood, I'd move the middle of the join to the middle of the drawer. And then with a pencil, just put a mark on the inside of the drawer. And we know because it's natural timber, we want it to expand and contract, come out about 3 8 of an inch or 10 mil there. And the depth of the slot in there, which is about 5 mil, And then if you go over to the table saw or band saw or whatever you choose, rip that and you'll end up with a panel, the right width. Fortunately, I have one here. So we now know that's the right width. However, I'll we'll just harp back to this one. This slot is narrower than the draw bottom. Now you can make it so it's the same thickness, but frankly, that looks tacky as well. So what I like to do is plane a bevel on the edge. If you look here, you can see I've planed a bevel on the front and on the two sides. That then allows for the drawer to have a nice lot of meat and thickness, but also to slide in quite snugly. When you come to the bottom, you might just have to put a little bit of pressure on the inside or the outside just to make sure it sticks in. And you can see I've got an overhead or a, a protrusion here. That's on purpose because I've had one particular piece of furniture I made and I think in a three year period it shrunk over half an inch. So I had to make a new draw bottom for it. So what we do, once you've got it fitted, this is a bit rough here so we can sand that out afterwards but just get it in, line it up, then draw a pencil mark down here and a pencil mark here. And then when you take the drawer bottom out, you've got an area there where you can drill your holes so you can fit your drawer bottoms in. I like using um, brass screws. And if you're ever using fine brass screws, always remember to use a little bit of soap. It acts as a lubricant. Get the right size one. And they're countersunk. So we just put our brass screws in. And never over tighten brass screws because you'll spin the head off quite easily. And that is the mysteries of making a drawer. So once you've got it in, whoops. It should fit in your carcass. You might have to fine tune it a little bit, just shave a little bit off the sides or whatever. Set the screws so they're all facing the same way. Get the 
carcass. And if everyone's smiling on us. There you have a nice drawer that's hand fitted. Okay, that's it. Steve pulling the shed door down for another week and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but please also make sure you keep it safe. All right. Seasons 1 and 2 of Woodworking Masterclass are now available on DVD. Call 31 Digital on 07 30 10 7331 or head over to the Woodworking Masterclass Facebook page to order. Grab a copy of Woodworking Masterclass on DVD and remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe and enjoy your woodwork. G'day, I'm Steve and I look forward to welcoming you to my workshop for Episode 4 of Woodworking Masterclass. This is the episode that we actually start to make these magnificent legs. We'll cut the shapes out and start to round them over. So until then, I look forward to your company on Woodworking Masterclass.